So now to the topic at hand, um, Web 5.0. It's just a random number for random times. Um, I'm just going to give you some thoughts. You know, you may disagree or agree or whatever. It's definitely my opinion. But there's some very interesting developments that are happening in the uh, world of new media these days. So, as many of you know, right now there is a current state of disunion in terms of the web. Uh, there is a massive war for your attention. I'm sure you've heard of the attention economy. Everyone's trying to get you to look at their content, essentially, whether it's uh, on the web or on a device. One of the big areas in terms of a battlefront is um, search. And so, as everyone knows, Google is the dominant player in that space. Last year, Google had 63% of the US search market and 90% of growth. Yahoo is the second, way, way back, 20%. And Microsoft has about between 8 to 9%. And uh, to put that into financial uh, perspective, Google's uh, rev revenues for the last quarter, Q3 actually, was 5.9 billion, which is 7% higher than the previous year. And uh, so they're definitely the, the leader. But that said, um, the ground may be shifting. Things are starting to happen. Um, I'll give you an indication. This is Rupert Murdoch from News Corp. They own Fox. Some of you probably watch Fox News, perhaps. And so he is smiling for, um, for very interesting reasons. Um, he recently announced that that Fox is going to be taking their content out of the Google index, which uh, caused them to be pilloried in the uh, blog sphere. Everyone thought he was completely insane, and, and it is possible it's an insane strategy. But what's really compelling, you know, is that even though Google is, you know, essentially the, um, the sexiest thing going on in cyberspace, um, you know, there's actually a very good strategy behind all this, and that's Bing. What happened after uh, Rupert Murdoch made his announcement is that everyone realized that, you know, News Corp and Microsoft are in, in negotiations right now, and so. What may very well happen is that uh, Bing may end up having the exclusive rights, indexing rights to, to News Corp's content, which is a very interesting business model. It's a very uh, clever strategy as well. And so the deal hasn't actually been finalized yet, but you can see that if a number of publishers and content creators move in that direction, what it'll do is drive up the cost for Google if they want to basically say they've got access to all the content in the world. Of course, there's still Yahoo, but um, Yahoo is like way behind. They've actually licensed their search out as well, so they're, they're not even in the search game anymore. So Yahoo has essentially become as sexy as Ernest Borgnine. So uh, <laughs> there's not a lot to Yahoo about these days. In fact, I'll tell you a funny story, and this is not to bad mouth Yahoo, but last year I was trying to do a deal with, with Yahoo on behalf of Zoom Media. And so I went to meet with the uh, GM at Yahoo Canada, uh, this great guy named Kerry Monroe. And I met with him, and uh, he basically told me he was leaving, and there was restructuring happening, and he was going to be gone. So he gave me the name of the guy who was replacing him. So I set up a meeting with his replacement, and I went to meet with this guy. He told me, well, we should wait a couple months because there's restructuring happening, so get back to me in two months. I get back to him in two months, and then he's gone. And so now there's apparently no one there running it. So there's a lot of changes happening at Yahoo these days, particularly uh, Yahoo Canada. Okay, so. As very evident here in Halifax, uh, the big thing right now in search is Twitter. I mean, it's very obvious just seeing how many people are Twittering here. And consumers are just beginning to find out what the value of Twitter is. The real value is real-time search. You know, with Twitter, you get an instant pulse of what's happening on the internet, as you can see from the screen there, versus Google, where it's indexed uh, results. Um, both Microsoft and Google have licensed Twitter results for their indexes. Um, I'm pretty sure eventually they'll both have their own real-time indexes as well. Um, so it's a very good communication tool. Uh, I do think that as a tool, its um, advantage might actually fade over time. There are things like the open microblogging standard, which is a standard that allows you to develop your own equivalent of Twitter. And uh, again, it's not very public that this technology exists, but it will become very evident, especially for enterprise solutions. But for now, people are calling Twitter the Walter Cronkite of our time, and pretty much is the go-to place whenever there's a major event happening around the world. Now, the other major front in terms of the battles that are happening in new media is the mobile space, which I think is actually very, uh, very exciting. Uh, mobile is going to be the greatest or biggest driver of web search and other data this year and moving onward. So these pocket players are very happy to see all of you. And so it's really about battling between cell phones and smartphones. And so 
as these stats show, in less than five years, the smartphones uh, uh, segment will make up 60% of the U.S. phone market. That's according to Pyramid Research. And so these numbers here are actually for the worldwide market. But the percentage of, of uh, total phones being used, there's basically a greater uh, percentage of, of smartphones being uh, used for that. Now in the, the war, the major combatants, um, as many of you already know, is Apple, with the iPhone. There's over 100,000 applications. Uh, 57 million are sold in two years, projected to sell 80 million iPhones by 2012. Um, as you can see from the image, you can use it for drinking beer as well. Um, <laughs> But to put it in perspective, you know, the Motorola Razr handsets, uh, 100 million are sold in 2009. So Apple is still uh, behind Motorola and some other handsets. Uh, and by the way, the iPhone 4G may be announced next week when Apple has their big announcement about their new, newest creation. Then there's the Palm Pre, which runs on web OS, their own operating system. Uh, it launched to great reviews. Um, it's amazing to see Palm is still around. Uh, and they're backed no less by Elevation Partners, they're the VC firm of Bono from YouTube. And um, their secret sauce in terms of the operating system is that they have something that the iPhone still doesn't currently have, which is uh, real multitasking. Um, not that many apps, but it's still uh, you know, widely um, viewed as a successful uh, handset. It doesn't seem to have the buzz it had about six months ago, but um, it's, it's a decent phone. Then there's the Google uh, Android. And Google is very clever. They, they focused on a mobile OS as opposed to handsets. It's open source. Anybody can build an application to get onto the platform. There are literally dozens of OEMs who are coming out with Android-powered phones. I'm sure you've heard of many of them. And so Google's goal is to have you spend as much time as possible using their services. Uh, the more searchable the world is, the more money Google makes. And as you know, uh, about a month ago, Google launched their own phone as well, the Nexus One which is developed by HTC. And the real game changer with the uh, Nexus One is the fact that you can order it as an unlocked phone through google.com slash phone here in Canada for some, for some reason. And then the other big player, speaking of Canada, is the Crackberry, which apparently is addictive as crack cocaine. And so they've got significant market share. Um, their OS has fallen behind the other players. Uh, watch for RIM to be pretty aggressive this year in terms of aggregating media content because they've fallen behind in that area. Um, there is no significant app store as well. Uh, consumers are starting to realize that there's a lot more you can do with a mobile device than just typing email. And so RIM um, is in a bit of trouble and, and they're actually focusing on, on more multimedia. And so those are the stats. There's a whole bunch of different types of stats in terms of market share. It really depends on who you're sourcing. But as you can see, uh, in terms of global market share, Nokia is still ahead, RIM is there, and Apple in third. And here's some more stats. In 2007, this is our stats, uh, Nokia had 50% of the smartphone market. And uh, let me see, by 2008, Apple basically doubled their share from 11%, which is 4.1 million units, and RIM had increased theirs to 19.5%. Nokia had dropped from 50% to 40%. So in terms of web usage, um, Symbian, which is the OS of Nokia, is, is really getting creamed by Apple and Google in terms of ad requests. Um, the iPhone now has 50% of US smartphone traffic, and the only OS that showed real growth um, last year was actually Google's Android, uh, because of the fact that there's so many Android handsets being released. So as of November last year, Android is up 20% smartphone web traffic, according to AdMod, and uh, it was 7% six months ago. So. You can see that Android is really taking uh, serious traction. Uh, what's interesting is that the company that measures uh, these metrics, are called, they're called AdMob, and they're actually being acquired by Google for $750 million. And so uh, you can see there, there's a sizable percentage still by Nokia, but Apple is growing share, and there's uh, also um, HCC and RIM. So in terms of U.S. smartphones, as I mentioned, Apple in, in the U.S. is a, a dominant player, uh, RIM second. And actually, their other phone is third. So RIM still has a pretty good position, but Apple is really you know, quite far ahead in terms of how people are using their smartphones. Now, in the mobile market, again, in terms of the operating system, as you can see, iPhone OS significantly far uh, as of the end of last year. Uh, Android is showing upward growth as well. Um, Windows Mobile is pretty much static, hasn't really done much. If anything, it's just declined. Uh, Microsoft just announced, though, that they will be launching a new version of Windows Mobile 
the leg rim is kind of slipped behind, and as you see, the rim is showing some downward trending as well. So it's really Google and iPhone who are really starting to, to gain major traction.